Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm so glad to hear this morning what a great show lineup uh, on Hump Day. So we've got some really, uh, really special guests, some really good things to talk about. But let's get started with our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew up there in Southport taking care of our, our daily needs. It's been a little wet right now, but it's going to warm up soon. Are you, in fact, high today is going to be 85, low is going to be 76. And the water temperature at the end of the pier is 81 degrees. So that's about, for this part of June, this is about average, about what you expect. Our river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew, on the outdoors of Mountain Dew. As you can guess, take a look at Apalachicola. It's, it's going straight up. I'm not going at an angle, it's just going straight up. I've never seen it go up that fast. So eight, it's at 8.1 rising. And we know what's going on in Choctatch at Carapel. All this rain the last couple of days is rising. Right now it's at 10, 11. It's going on up. It's going to, uh, we're going to have some high water for the weekend. We thought this weekend was going to be good. Got a full moon tomorrow night. But I don't think it's going to have an effect on the freshwater fishing because it's going to just be high water. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good, strong tide today. We're looking at a high of 7.55 and a low of 7. About an 11-hour break right there, but a good, strong tide. And it's going to be going out, but it's going to have a southwest wind sort of holding up a little bit at 10 miles an hour. So be aware of what's going on there. The rain sort of breaks off, and it's just, you know, it's been a, been a wet week. So if you get a chance to get out, do it. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back with our special guest. All right, welcome back, and welcome to our special guest this morning, Dr. Steve Taylor. I used to know him as Steve Taylor when he went to Mosley. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Coach. Okay, we got to do a disclaimer now. He, he's a preacher, but he's a fishing preacher. So we're <laughs> at Emerald Coast Fellowship. I've known him since he was a teenager and all, so I'm, yes, I'm so proud of him. And I've, I've actually been on his podcast with church, so I'm returning the favor to him being on our show. But we've wanted you to come on for a while because he does love to fish. So tell us about yourself. Well, I do love to fish. I learned learned to fish from my dad. Um, I'm a Bay County uh, native. I mm -hmm. uh, grew up in Forest Park. I uh, know a bunch of your your listeners actually probably were people that were teachers of mine and mm -hmm. uh, that I grew up around. I um, at 17 is when I actually felt like God wanted me to go into ministry. I quit. Uh, my baseball career was done from Mosley and Coach Frank and all that at that point and. Uh, I actually moved away from Panama City after a couple years at Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. um, did seminary, uh, pastored for almost eight years in uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, uh -huh. and then when I got a chance to move home, I I really never planned to come back. Uh, but when I it, it wasn't a negative thing. But whenever we did come back, I have fallen in love with the water, with the people, mm -hmm. um, and have just been so excited to be back home. Uh, and I pastored Emerald Coast Fellowship. At Emerald Coast Navy. Fellowship, and it. And then you ended up getting a doctoral degree. I tell us about that. While I was while I was in Jacksonville, um, I took the time to get my doctorate from mm -hmm. New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. It took me about five years to get that done, and uh, I kind of went to and from New Orleans to make it happen. And I guess I got that when I was 32, and uh, yep. just before we moved moved back here in 07. When, so. he, when he moved back, and I heard he's back in town. It, it, I said, well, this is the same guy when they called him Dr. Steve Taylor. Is that the same guy that I had at Mosley? He's a doctor now? But well. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> I really was. I, I really was. And, and uh, the tie we have in, other than just knowing him uh, most of his life, is just and what a fine person and what he does is, is, you know, in doing God's work and all. But a lot of my students that took outdoor ed at Mosley yeah. would go to Emerald Coast Fellowship. A lot of our students. Yes, and, sir. And it was just, um, and it always impressed me with, with a young people's group in the, in the wreck, and we uh, and it was <laughs> you know if you'll let me we we when I first moved back I, my predecessor Bill Montgomery who also loves fish by the way but he was the pastor for about four years uh -huh. and uh, I ended up didn't anticipate doing student ministry but I did uh -huh. and I uh, got over at Mosley as much as I could and um, we built the wreck uh, yeah. built that thing off of a, a Fisher Price ship that would cut in half and uh, it's That's called the wreck because it's shipwreck on yeah. the inside. 
And, and so many times, uh, a lot of us, are, are, our, our lives are wrecked anyway, and we'll go there and try to... <laughs> right. It, it, God makes a difference in our life. He sure does. Yeah. You've had some amazing teenagers come through there. Yeah. Um, we've been, obviously, it's been, we've been back since 07. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Moore, our student minister, does a tremendous job with them these days. And, uh, you know, it's been 14 years. Yeah. Um, so it's been and, neat. And your staff. Tell us about your staff. We have uh, our student minister, Doug Moore, uh, does a great job. We've got a children's director. Uh, and Bridget Jenks does a great mm -hmm. job with children. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex Gentile is one that you would know. His granddaddy is watching right this That's minute. Right. Uh, Charles Nichols, mm -hmm. and uh, he works with college ministry and does a whole bunch of other things. Been working with community stuff, backpack ministry. Yeah. He's helped me quite a bit with podcasts. Sarah Grace, who you also know, has helped yeah. us with the, um, the communication side mm -hmm. of things. And uh, really good folks. Really we've got a great team yeah, over there. Really good folks. <laughs> but you're right. Here's what I, I get a kick of. I ride by there a lot on 390, and all this road construction. Yes, sir. How does that affect you? Well, it's um, <laughs> it's 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 good and bad. Yeah. The good news is we went from a two lane on 390 to what's going to be a six lane on one side, mm -hmm. and on the other side with Jinx, we're going from two lanes to four lanes, and so yeah. it's a mess. Um, access will get a little more difficult, but there's going to be a bunch of people driving by the church. Well, the thing about it, the future looks great when that six lane is finished and everything, and you all going to be in a great location. We're and excited. That, that church originally started out as Cook Memorial Baptist. It did. And uh, the Cook family, I always uh, I, I followed that church because of the history. The Cook family, they were uh, part of the fishing early fishing families of Bay County. The really? Cook, yes, they were. Uh, Cook Fish House. It was that family there. My grandparents. I haven't told many people this. My grandparents have told me that I'm a distant relative of the Cooks. That's where the and, fishing comes uh, in. It's it, well, <laughs> probably is. It's funny to me though that I, I get to pastor a church that has has yes. that background. Yes, good folks and all. So it's amazing how how the building has been there, although it's been changing all. Uh, for, I mean, the location been there through so many generations, and it's still it's so, going so strong now. I just get a kick out of that. How as, it started and as a kid, I got to I actually the, my first experience at the church was being a, a royal ambassador. It's an old Southern Baptist. It's like Cub Scouts. Yeah, and we did we on that property. Um, yeah. We did water boils and uh, BB gun shoots and all kinds of Fun little things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's my first memories of the church that I'm actually pastoring. Now. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, right. we got his background now, so we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to actually prove he's a fisherman. We've got some pictures to show you of him catching some fish. So we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So here with Dr. Steve Taylor. I was just telling him off air that uh, when I was a kid growing up, I, uh, I, if we had a pastor that, that you know, we rotated pastors. And, but if we had one that loved the outdoors and liked to fish, my dad would say, that my brother, Brother Hodges or Brother Hall, they, they like to fish. And it seemed like I'd pay closer attention on Sunday morning because I had something in common with them. That's it. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on. we got some pictures here. I know uh, and your dad got you into fishing. He did. And uh, so uh, we're going to show some pictures. And, and you, I, this first one, I, I, the first one you sent, welcome to Max Point. Yeah. Now tell us about Max Point. Well, I thought your viewers would, you know, after the hurricane, it's been hard to know who's open and who's not open. They took some damage up at, at Lake Seminole. And mm -hmm. I, I had a couple of days uh, while the kids were going to youth camp and the wife with them. I, 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 this is how I get my therapy, so to speak. And so you see just my truck there, and it was a day after Memorial Day, and oh. Max Point is the old Wingate Slunker Lodge. And uh, they're open, they got cabins, the boat ramps are there, and they got a restaurant. And so they're open now. For sure. They are open. Uh, we've, uh, we've talked to them, I, I know the folks up there, they change hands a time or two, but that is a, one of the most extre extreme bass fishing locations in our, in our area. It's amazing. It, it's a great location. They, they've they tried to keep Jack Wingate's heritage alive. Yes, they have. And uh, it's uh, if people didn't know there's a place you can go stay, I just thought maybe I'd give a shout out to your guys. Max Point. And it, it, we've been up there a, a while back and uh, they were just starting back. I have a cousin, if you look straight through those trees, Curtis Locke lives back there about a mile, well, half a mile or so back there. So. Uh, he don't want, he don't like people to know about it because <laughs> well I, that, that's the but catch twenty two by telling people it's going to be busier next that's time. That's the catch twenty two in this show here. Same way, I, you know, 
All right, here we go. Let's talk about some fishing. What have we got here? Well, I've kind of saved this one for your show. Um, <laughs> I caught a fish uh, at Deer Point that, uh, it's not a big bass, but it's got a bird in its mouth. A bird? It looks like a duck to me. Okay, look, we got another one. And, uh, okay. now that's a, that's a different fish there. Okay. But that one, uh, that one's fat too. Looks like people thought that one was uh, spawning, but that one actually uh, had just eaten a brim. Oh man. And uh, that big fat belly is actually the other end of the brim that was in its mouth. Oh, cool. Um, I think there's another one there with a bird in it, it yeah. I, maybe. Okay. So that's about a two and a half, three pound fish is all that is with a baby duck in his mouth. A baby duck? It looked like a baby duck to I me. I believe it was. And uh, I, I decided to let it keep oh. the duck. I threw it right back, but... Uh, yeah, that's what it is. I've caught, I've heard of big bass eating those things, but if you ever wondered if a bass is a voracious feeder, uh, they are. You know, we... Uh, I, Went through a period of time where I was collected old, old fishing tackle, and I, I really was I had a really voracious appetite in collecting them. And one of the things, I, of course, we found the old frog ones and all, but I and I found some old duck lures, some little baby duck lures. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, I don't think they make them anymore. You don't see very many <laughs> little <laughs> duck lures, but uh, they do. They, that shows how they, what kind of feeders they are. Well, you know, there's a couple of companies out now that do all, they make rats and ducks okay, and all kinds of things. Okay, they are making them still. I didn't know kinda that. Kind of like your uh, hollow, body, hollow body frog, but they'll put, they'll make them look like different things. Yeah, well, that's cool. Uh, what, uh, you, you, when you go bass fishing all, do you pick out a place uh, you, ahead of time or you just go around? How do you do your bass fishing? Well, if I'm being honest with you, after the storm, I, I, with that picture you saw at Lake Seminole, I think the first time I've been up there mm -hmm. and since the storm, and so, uh, I live right at uh, Deer Point Lake, and so mm -hmm. most of my fishing is there. It's a hard lake to fish. Uh, I think it, I need to say that because I'd love for y'all to keep going to the river and stay <laughs> off my lake. It is challenging. Uh, it, it really is. It's a tough place. Yeah. And you know, those, uh, guys, those guys have these uh, Tuesday night tournaments and not so serious Saturday morning tournaments and all. Yep. And uh, they, they fish I, it hard. You know, I, I try to keep some notes of what I've done in years past. Mm -hmm. I know some of the old timers. I guess it's okay to drop a guy's name, but Bobby Smith Bobby is a guy Smith. that always keeps notes. And uh, I hadn't been able to get him to share his notes with me. But I have tried to at least, you know, season, seasonal patterns matter. Yes. Uh, but my tendency, maybe like a lot of your folks, I don't, I don't get to plan a whole lot. I'm not always sure if I'm even gonna get to go on a given day. Yeah. And so I throw my rods in and I just go. That's, a, that's great, that's a great. The best time to go fishing is when you have time to go fishing. That's right, I, I agree. And, and one thing, Bobby Smith, he's been on the show before when he caught number 45,000. He's had his, he showed his notes and all that. That's truly incredible. What Bobby is doing. He, it, it's an incredible thing. You know, another th another connection that we have is when I moved when I moved to town, mm -hmm. I knew it was a sign from God I was supposed to come because the secretary at the church is Shana Courtney, and her husband's Alan Courtney. Alan Courtney. Your Courtney. viewers he, have to know who that is. He ran that, the Tuesday night tournaments for probably twenty years. Up Alan Courtney's been on the show several times. I fished with Alan. He is one of the top bass fishermen in, I, in the Panhandle. Well, and I, I didn't catch many fish at Deer Point growing up. It uh -huh. just was the closest lake to go to. Um, and it, it wasn't until after learning a few, th I don't catch them every time I go. You see the pictures, it, it, they're hard to come by. Yeah. <laughs> but what little I know, I've learned from, from some of those guys. And we talk about that, about, you know, learning from, learning from people who, who've gone in salt water, fresh water. That's two pretty good, Bobby Smith and Alan Courtney now, they're, you're top of the chain right there. <laughs> well, they're, 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 they're very kind men yeah. and they're good men yeah. and they're mm -hmm. local icons fishing wise. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing what, what what they've accomplished and they have a passion for it too. So uh Alan, uh, last time I talked to Alan, he he was a uh, he he had a web page at one time. Do you still have that? On you know, he he uh, I think he sold that. Okay. He's um he's uh, they've um He's fishing a little bit less, okay. Uh, you know, but he picks his shots. He's mm -hmm. still good at it. He's invested a lot. I've loved seeing him invest in guys like Blake Sutherland, yes. his young bunch. You talk yes. about some of those We've students. We've had Blake on before too. And that's the real bright spot, seeing these young guys that you've introduced to the mm -hmm. outdoors that are now mm -hmm. picking that up. They're learning faster than we did. Like <laughs> they're going on YouTube and, I, I and, and and they're getting it the day of. They're watching these guys. I don't know how they do it. They're watching these guys on their phones, I think, while the, the major league fishing and all that. So I'm learning from them. We're, we're laughing about it. I gave an example the other day about the guys leaving Atlanta, not knowing anything about surf fishing. By the time they get here, they've already caught three pompano because they've yeah. learned all the way down there. And uh, that is a quick way to learn. But nothing like actually going out there with somebody and just watching them and listening to them on the water. Absolutely. You don't get any better than that. No, it's yeah. it's the same way Jesus taught us because he modeled it for his disciples, right? There you go. And, right. and taught them how to fish. Right. And, and if 
you know, you could tell me about the spot, and I've had Alan do this before. I caught him here by this tree. You turn there, you go. <laughs> yeah. But if he just take me, yeah, I, just, I learned so much let me, more. Let me see you. <laughs> yep. And we're talking about, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, and uh, all outdoorsmen, and we all go. I know you've seen it too. When I get out there, I'm probably about before I might be 40 miles out. I might be sitting up in a tree, but it's just something about being in the outdoors. I, I've always felt a closer presence. It, to God at those times, the, I just have. Sunrises yeah, and sunsets yes. are unique every day. God creates them. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that calmed me, and, and, and I know some of your viewers have been, I mean, we had damage after the storm. It's been tough, pandemic, all that stuff. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed, the rut came right on time. <laughs> the spawn still happened. The mayflies still hatched. That's like true. we feel like the news tells us the world's falling apart. Uh -huh. And yet nature just seems to just kind of click right on along and God just keeps, it, the sun Great comes point. up every day. They may say it won't, but it does. It does. <laughs> Great point. All right, we're going to take our final break. Come back. We've got some more pictures to show you. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. See, we're Dr. Steve Taylor from Emerald Coast Fellowship, the fishing preacher man or the preaching <laughs> fisherman. I don't know what we're going to call it. <laughs> fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers from Port St. Joe. We're looking at one time, 1039 to 1239 today. And those fishing times, we've talked about important how they are. Something important that Steve does, and I've been on this podcast, and tell us about this. We always have so much negative stuff going on now. You came up with an idea. Well, you called it Good News Bay. Good News Bay. That's the name of a podcast that we created. Um, you know, like many of, well, even, even you talking about what you had to do in the garage just to keep the show going. We've learned <laughs> that we can get to an audience bigger than just those that attend on Sunday. Many of your people go to other churches, and that's great and phenomenal, but I think sometimes we let the news dictate how we feel about life. Mm -hmm. um, I've done several podcasts already with guys like um, Steve Sutherland and uh, uh, General uh, McQueen, who's the city manager. Uh, last week it was the sheriff, oh, Lori yeah. Allen next week. And so we take each of these individuals and try to provide some positive. They're doing a jillion different things. Mm -hmm. We love our local leaders. They're not perfect, but they're trying real hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love for folks to just give it a view, find some good news they can tell. Uh, there's and folks it, moving to our county county every day, and it's just a way to, to try to change the conversation. And it's all positive. I was on there with a second or third one or whatever, yes, sir. and it was just, it got so much good feedback. And there's a lot of good news out there. There we, really we is. Can't you get gotta, mired, we can't get mired in the bad it, stuff. It's perspective. Talking about some, some cool things and all, you know, you were, you were talking about it, the person really got you started into, uh, let's see, you, you messaged that to me. Okay. I did. I, I got a couple pictures oh, of... Right uh, so tell us about this picture. Well, earlier this year, I, I, um, in the spring times when it tends to be better at Deer Point, I called my dad and he had just a couple of hours and uh, he caught a good one there. Oh, I'm uh, telling you. He, uh, you know, we grew up fishing on a little Sears John boat. And uh, with a 1956 Evinrood outboard. No way. And we went just often enough to go uh, as the carburetor would get clogged about every time. So we, <laughs> so I, it's a treat now these days to be able to, to try to put him on one now. And so y'all had the old pull start. We did. Uh, what we did more pulling than starting. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad. I didn't know you went through that because we did the same thing in my generation. So, okay, what about this? This is, uh, this is Charles Nichols. He is a... Uh, I don't know if you have gotten to see a 90-year-old bass fish lately, but that, uh, that is him. He, he and my dad, uh, Mr. Nichols, made it so that I got to go fishing one day. When dad was going to leave me at home, Mr. Nichols uh, asked me if I wanted to go, and I got to go on a drawdown at Deer Point, and so, okay, so. that's on drawdown at Deer Point. When we got in the boat, uh, his grandson Alex was with us, and he yeah. is who took the picture, but he turned that hat around backwards as we were getting ready to plant off, and I said, there you go, multiple generations, yep. and they, they all do it the same way. Uh, he's been there, done, done that before. He loved uh, it. Uh, he's watching today. He, he watches your show religiously. He's a loyal viewer. I hear from him a lot. Uh, he'll, he'll let me know his son is out in Colorado watching the show, and uh, he's, he's great folks right there. They came up fishing Wimico. That's where he loves to go. Aha, uh -huh. giving away the secret then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, we got we got some time left now. Uh, when when you went into the ministry, what was you think of your biggest challenge? Uh, you know, for me, those that knew me when I was a kid know that I was very shy. I didn't speak out loud very much. Yeah. Um, when God first nudged me that way, I thought probably that He was going to have me be a student minister, which not knowing that you could have youth groups big as what we got now, because I thought maybe I could talk in front of ten or twelve. So for me. It was just the idea of being in public, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, could God use somebody that is as bashful and shy as I am? <laughs> and so uh, I, I've never really felt 
Did, I mean, you, did you find yourself it. saying, God, are you sure you want me to do this? It's, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, it's just been crazy to see God yeah. open doors as, as I've tried to be faithful. I know uh, most people don't realize, and uh, I've, I've seen it, and I've been around pastors my whole life and been close to some of them and their families. The amount of, I guess, I won't say pressure or stress or whatever, it's just constant something to be done. You know, when you lose someone in church, you got to, you know, go with the family, you got to do the funerals, you got to do the weddings, you got, there's so much to be and, done. Well, let me, let me just encourage everybody with leaders in general, yeah. um, anybody that's leading anything right now, yeah. all the processes have changed, nobody's happy about anything, and I, that's not trying to be negative, it's just, yeah. there's a, and yeah. so um, the microscope that we live under yeah. with all the social media, um, yeah. one of the things I enjoyed about Jacksonville I could go out in public and never see anybody. Uh, yeah. uh, I can't go anywhere locally uh, yeah. that I don't see somebody I went to school. And yeah. that's not negative. It's great, yeah. and, but there, it's also... I know that guy. There's Steve. It's, huh? it's, yeah. Uh, but it's, I, there's a great... I will say this. There's a great privilege in living in a town that I grew up in mm -hmm. and getting to love and encourage the parents of my friends, my mm -hmm. teachers. Mm -hmm. um, it's more painful some days because I've known them my whole life. Yeah. You talk to a doctor that's been, I've known several doctors locally that have treated people for 40 years. They get to know them personally. They yeah. love them. Yeah. Um, so the greatness about it is also probably the biggest challenge. Yeah. Do you, uh, and speaking of challenges, what do you see, our country is, you know, there's so much negative stuff out there. What do you see the biggest challenge in the next couple of years and all for not just our community, for our country? You know, I, I think that the most important thing we could do is talk, this is, this is real preachery, okay, but talk about the good <laughs> news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because I truly, and I said this Sunday, I truly believe that if we got the Jesus part right, yeah. it would fix all the other things. And until we get that part right, we're going to continue to have race issues. We're going to continue to have uh, many of the other mm -hmm. battles that we have, but the one should fix all the others. Yeah. And that's more of a message, I guess, to believers. But I. Yeah. As Christians, we always have hope, and the best is always yet to come. Yeah, and I hope is always out there. You just hope it's going to get back and all that. And I, that's, I, I appreciate what you do and all. And, I, and this is sort of how the outdoors sort of blends in with faith because, you know, I'm on that next cast, I'm going to catch that big bass. Or, you know, that, that next week is going to, you know, hope and faith all sort of goes together. It does. I appreciate your willingness to let me talk about faith. Well, so we, we, this, as long as we do doing that outdoors, we're going to be doing those kind of things. We run out of time. We did. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you, sir. Dr. Appreciate Dr. it, Coach. Dr. Steve Taylor, Emerald Coast Fellowship. If you don't have a own church and all, everybody check them out. They're a bunch Can of you people. say fishing preacher one more time? The, the fishing preacher man <laughs> or the preaching fisherman. Well, whichever one you like. Thank you all for watching the and outdoors. We always appreciate the viewership. Do something good today for fellow man and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.